welcome. Welcome, my friends, to the Beggars and Brawlers podcast. This is episode number 21, recorded Thursday, the 3rd of June, 2021, with the rumble of my diesel engine in the background because the fruit season has started. I'm waiting for repairs in Billings, Montana, and it is way too hot to not have the AC running. And today, today we're going to geek out. So it's the beginning of the fruit season, which always means a period of mourning for me because I have to stop being the person I want to be who is an author of fantasy novels and start being the person who pays the bills, and that is a fruit salesman. But in this interim period, I often find a lot of time or a lot more time than I had at home for daydreaming, partially because I drive so long every day. (laughs) Um, So I... And this year, I have ambitious plans of trying to write a novel during the fruit season to try to get rid of some of this feeling that I just completely stopped being a writer. It's always a little hard to get back into it in the fall, like my writing muscles have atrophied. And I really like the idea of just having kind of a fun, one-off novel that I write just because I want to. Um, I write all my novels because I want to, but this one would truly be for fun. (laughs) Not worried if anybody likes it. The first novel I ever wrote was Conan fan fiction because I was trying out the whole notion of writing a novel at all, and so I wanted to keep things pretty simple. And this time, my experiment, or the thing that's new, is dictating versus typing, which is something that I've never done. It may seem natural because I'm always recording these podcasts and I record audiobooks, but the notion of spinning a tale from my head and just saying it out loud and not necessarily seeing it on the page because the plan is to do this while I'm driving. (laughs) So I shouldn't really be looking at the page. Um, It sounds a little crazy and I have tried it before and it did not work well. So I want to keep everything else pretty simple and straightforward. At least that was the plan. So I thought I'm going to have this time in the week of starting fruit before I actually get fruit where I'm taking care of details to just kind of plan this novel and Another idea that I have for this novel, and see, this is why it's impossible for me to keep anything simple, is that I'd like it to be interactive. Um, I had this notion that I would make up the world, and then I'd figure out what kind of stories I could tell in it, and then I'd ask you, I'd put out a poll and say, which of these stories sounds like the most cool to do? But, (laughs) this shows how little I know myself, after a week of, of working on it a fair amount, what I have is a very detailed world, and... Still kind of no idea who my characters are or what kind of story they could go on. (laughs) So that poll that I had thought about giving you is uh, probably still a couple weeks off. Or maybe by that time I'll have figured it out um, and I'll have chapters. And that's kind of the main part of this that I want to be interactive is that I want to post the chapters and maybe even read you the chapters if I'm feeling crazy as I get them written and to kind of get your feedback and say like, this was cool, this didn't make sense, whatever, and to kind of write the novel along with you. And if you have ideas, especially for where it could go or what would make things even cooler, I want to take those and incorporate them. So that's something I'm really excited about. And uh, I'm so determined to make it happen that this time, even though I don't have stories ready for you, I do still have a poll, but it's about the world building details, which is why I said that we're going to get nerdy because Let's admit it, making up worlds is probably the nerdiest part of fantasy, which is probably the nerdiest genre of entertainment that exists. So welcome to Nerdiness (laughs) 2.0. Let's make up worlds together. So let me tell you what I have so far, and then um, I'll hit you with some of the questions that I am still thinking through, in which there's so many possibilities that would be cool that I have had trouble narrowing it down. So I thought I'd hear from you the person who will ultimately be consuming the story and see what kind of story you'd like to read or listen to as the case is. So, the world so far. It is a world powered by wind. The main continent is full of plains, across which wagons sail under giant wings and whose paddle wheels crank giant spring coils inside to drive the wagons mechanically when the wind fails or blows the wrong direction. Cities have wind towers too, and use massive versions of those coiled springs to power all manner of ingenious things. It is a world racked by plague. After centuries of prosperity driven by wind power and the free trade of people and information across the vast interior plains, a terrible disease has risen in the crowded cities. The blackness, they call it, 
a blackening and weakening of the bones that strikes at random, making people so fragile the slightest breeze will shatter their bones. It is a continent colonized in desperation, the frozen southern landmass, overrun with mysterious dragons and fiery volcanoes rising from the ice, but blessedly free of the blackness. In fact, those colonizers intrepid enough to explore into the interior, to make homes in the warm calderas left by nesting dragons, have discovered a cure to the blackness, dragon bone. And so starts a new, frenzied economy, the domestication and harvesting of dragons, wild and alien creatures who have a single weakness, music. Any sort of steady rhythm lulls them to sleep, and with experimentation the colonizers have found that certain harmonies will lead them to work, or coax them to breathe fire, or lure them into pulling a sled. Already a deeply musical people, whose culture reveres bards and uses them to spread knowledge, the fit seems perfect. But trouble rides the wind. As taxation and demand for dragonbone increases from the old continent, sedition brews among the colonists, who ask why they should live in such harsh conditions for such little reward. And the increasing pace of dragon domestication and harvesting sparks increased pushback from the dragons themselves, not just the younger ones they find seeking new calderas near the coast, but the massive and ancient ones that fly from the uncharted reaches of the ice. So, that's what I have so far. <laughs> I'm really excited about this world, and I think there's a lot of really cool stories we could tell in it. But I'm still dialing in the details. So this is where I wanted your help and your opinions. Um, I've never written a story about dragons before, which is crazy because this will be my 10th novel. Wow. Uh, yeah, it'll be my 10th novel. And none of them have any sort of magical creature in them, except perhaps for that Conan fan fiction I mentioned. Um, and it doesn't really count. It'll likely never see the light of day. So I love dragons when I read about them. I've just never written them. And it turns out when you think about dragons, there's so many ways that they can go. They can be these crazy, like enraged beasts. They can be hyper intelligent, advanced civilization that's dying up in the mountains. They can be gods, like in the case of some of the Miyazaki films. They can be like reptiles or like snakes or like lions or like cats or they can have feathers there's so many things that dragons can do we mostly agree that they're going to breathe fire <laughs> and they're going to be really dangerous but terry pratchett had cute little weird beggar dragons too so <laughs> there's a lot of ways that dragons can go um and i have what i think are some pretty cool ideas for how these dragons will work but um I have a lot of questions still about what would be the coolest dragon. And then there's some questions too about the world and the characters and the conflicts that you think would be cool because there's there's so many ways we could go here with the the sedition against the old colony and the magical cure that the bones provide and the demand that that causes and the dragons pushing back against increased domestication and the secrets behind why the music works for the dragons and all these kind of things. So if you're interested in giving me your opinions and shaping the story that's going to come, there's a link in the liner notes to a poll that I made. Um, I sent it out to my newsletter as well. Um, so I'm going to take all your opinions and kind of see what's the most popular and use that to shape the story that comes. So the next podcast will be in two weeks probably. And by that point, let's hope the fruit hasn't entirely taken over my brain and I'll have the story hammered out and then I can start writing it on these long, long drives that I do out to the orchards to get fruit. Um, so check out that poll if you're interested. Until then, I hope this podcast finds you well and in the company of good books. I spent some time reading The Dragon Gate by Lindsay Baroker, who's this fantasy, indie fantasy powerhouse. Um, and I was like, wow, she has a dragon book. I'm going to write about dragons. So I started reading it and it was really good. She's great at plot and character and witty banter. Um, and the characters weren't quite as deep as I wanted them to be. So now I'm on to Adrian Tchaikovsky, uh, who wrote this book that so many, everyone who's read it recommends it, essentially, and I now see why. Children of Time, it's, uh, man, it's an amazing book. I don't want to give you any spoilers. I don't even want to give it a glowing recommendation because I feel like if you build up those expectations, inevitably they'll get shattered. So <laughs> let's just say that I like it and Spiders in Space. I'm just going to say Spiders in Space and leave it at that. <laughs> I'll be back next week with the results of those polls, and maybe I'll even have a chapter of the book to read to you, which I think would be pretty awesome. I'm really looking forward to writing it and uh, and enjoying this nerdy, nerdy process of building the world and imagining 
all the ways that it works. In the meantime, it's uh, the place where my brain feels happiest. So even though I'm apart from my family and I'm starting this section of my year that I'm never in love with, which is basically all grueling and fairly repetitive work, <laughs> I'm still enjoying it. So I hope this podcast finds you well and in the company of good books. Until next time, my friends, read on. For more information on Levi Jacobs and his books, including the award-winning Tide Collar Chronicles, please visit www.levijacobs.com. Or for a free audiobook, only available to podcast listeners, go to www.levijacobs.com slash free. Thanks for listening and read on. Thank you.